Hi, I'm Jimmy, and Lenovo sent me its Mirage Solo headset to review. Is it any good? Let's find out. Lenovo's Mirage Solo is the first major wireless VR headset that offers six degrees of freedom movement, otherwise known as six off. Unlike other mobile VR headsets like Gear VR and Oculus Go, this means that you can lean forwards, backwards, and duck. This essentially grants you wireless room scale experiences without having to set up external trackers. This is huge. It's able to do this by way of inside out tracking with its two front facing cameras. Made in partnership with Google, Lenovo's Mirage Solo is powered by Daydream 2.0 and its ecosystem. The ergonomics of the headset is most similar to Sony's PSVR. It offers padding in the front and back and has a dial that you can use to tighten the strap. Like the PSVR, it even offers a button at the bottom so you can slide the front of the headset forwards and backwards, which helps with glass wearers. The nose guard does a good job blocking light, almost too good in my case as it pressed up against my nose a bit more than I would like. This actually made it a bit harder for me to breathe, though your mileage may vary. I wish there was an added strap at the top middle so it would alleviate some of the weight here. Speaking of weight, the headset is really heavy. At 645 grams, it's the heaviest modern VR headset out on the market. As a reference, the original Vive weighs 555 grams, and some people think that headset is too heavy. After a while, you'll feel a lot of pressure on your forehead, which makes it uncomfortable to wear for long periods of time. To the left of the headset, there's a charging port and a micro SD card reader. The right side has the power and volume buttons along with a headphone jack. The dial on the back of the headset makes it a bit more cumbersome to lie down compared to something like the Oculus Go, but it's still doable with like a pillow or something. A downside to the Mirage Solo is that it doesn't come with integrated earphones. Instead, it includes short earbuds. After using headsets like the Oculus Go and Rift, it's hard to go back to earbuds and it feels quite cumbersome to put on in comparison. The Lenovo Mirage Solo uses Google's Daydream controller. Unlike the headset, it only features three degrees of freedom movement. It also lacks a trigger button. These elements basically relegate the Mirage Solo to more casual gaming experiences and media consumption. The headset uses a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440p resolution screen. This is the same resolution as the Oculus Go. Visuals and text look very clear here. Like the Go, it also uses an LCD panel. This means it doesn't offer the same high contrast that OLED panels offer, but the screen door effect is kept at a minimum. The LCD also features a 75Hz refresh rate. This is higher than the Go's 72Hz max, but lower than the Rift and Vive's 90Hz equivalents. The Mirage Solo uses Fresnel lenses, and the viewing area is good, but not great. In my experience, when you go a little north of center, it starts to blur. Internally, the headset is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 835 VR chip, which is more powerful than the Oculus Go's Snapdragon 821 equivalent. You also have 4GB of RAM here, along with 64GB of built-in storage. The headset also takes microSD cards up to 256GB. The Mirage Solo is powered by a 4000mAh battery, which lasted me roughly 2.5 hours on a single charge. The specs and the design of the headset opens up new possibilities for mobile VR. I can't stress how important 6 degrees of freedom movement is here. There aren't a lot of games and apps that currently support room scale as of yet, but disabling the safety bounds and walking around the bottom of the ocean in something like BBC's Life in VR feels truly engaging. Sixtoff also mitigates motion sickness as it mimics how we as humans perceive the world. While there isn't a ton of Sixtoff content enabled out there just yet, Google asserts getting existing games to support Sixtoff is pretty easily. Currently, there are only a handful of great titles that support the tech. The Lenovo Mirage Solo cramps a bunch of awesome tech into a headset, and I can't stress how great it is to see a wireless Sixtoff technology, but it does end up being a bit too heavy as a result. At $400, it's also twice the price of the Oculus Go, and is the same price as the Oculus Rift. If you just want something more affordable to view 360 degree content, the Oculus Go might be a better choice. If you want a more hardcore gaming experience and can put up with wires, the Oculus Rift might be a better buy. If you need an immersive and truly wireless experience, then the Lenovo Mirage Solo is currently the best VR headset on the market for that. I want to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons that made this video possible. My aim is to make the best VR videos on the internet, but I can't do that alone. If you want to help, please consider donating to the Patreon. Thanks.